So first of all, um, I did create a, libra a, a library. It's basically a remake of uh, favia.mpl, which, which, uh, which was developed by Childug and uh, Odin Holmes. Uh, there was a slight problem, well, a slight problem. It's, it's more like I did find some edge case that the library wasn't providing, and it, I tried to uh, make, it, make it work. And by some luck, I, was I, I got some success with it. So I tried to iterate, and it just keep on giving. It's a gift that keep on giving. So <laughs> um, the most, first of all, I, I'll try to tell you how to debug template metaprogramming. There is some tricks that you can use. Nothing is very perfect. It's still metaprogramming, but we'll, we'll go. I'll try to go step by step. So this is the most important slide: how to, how to debug TMP and how to read my library. Of course, I have a small link. So, um, the very first, the, the 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 trick that I use to develop my library and to test and to, and to debug is basically to create to crash a compiler into a type and to read the error message. So basically, uh, this is my library with just uh, the raw the raw uh, um, the raw um, text of of my uh, of my library. Uh, so I create a structure name. It doesn't really matter. Context bar. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that it doesn't have any conversion uh, over there of any kind. Then I wrote this. This is. Uh, is it big enough for you? Well, I can make it a little bit bigger. I'll go with twenty. Good enough. Um, this is a f just. A template, uh, template uh, mixer programming alias that resolves to a type. It can be any type depending on the function, and this doesn't matter because uh, uh, the, not, it's not that it doesn't matter. The name of the variable doesn't matter. It's just that I'm trying to convert it to this error message, and then in the the the, the in the error message, it cannot convert const error message to the name of the function, the, the function, aka the answer. This, this, so this, for example, eval pipe input int. This uh, eval pipe is required for my library. Input, well, it's just the inputs. You add the cons, and after that, you add the, the pointer. And this create a add cons in pointer. If we shift it, no, it's in pointer cons. So this gives you the exact type that you receive. Of course, if if I say depending on the on the, the the thing that I'm trying to convert it, for example zero, this will compile because zero is convertible to a pointer const. <laughs> so, if you arrive to a type that is, for example, std any, well, you have a problem because there is it can convert to anything. So, <laughs> that's but that's one way. Um, now for reading my library. Basically, most of the time I do this. Evil pipe input, then we add the pointer, we add the cons, and then this. And now I, I'm going to show you the main selling point of my library, something that I, that I have worked very hard to make it work. You can comment out of uh, one of the function, and it still works because the evil pipe. Takes some uh, a variadic amount of template metaprogramming function, and if we comment it out on a line, it will work because well, it's it's not nested together. Clavier has this problem where everything the, the next function is nested inside the the the, fir, the, fir, the previous one, so it gets complex very very hard, uh, very fast. And you and using this, I have to check which angle bracket are uh, uh, where. This. Work correctly. Um, also, I, I did something to improve how do you how do you um, interact with list, but I didn't press that. Float, for example. Now the problem here is that I have an int and a, and a float, and this meta function only take one argument. So add cons to int and float doesn't work. And this is the error message where there is not w uh, a good way to say hey. Um, there, there, it, it failed to compile completely. This is different than what we use uh, with the first error message, because the the function, the meta function itself, uh, wasn't able to recognize correctly the types inside of it. So for this, we just say 
add something like for each. And now we have this uh, constant cons float. Uh, this TS is a very special type. It's the only one that gets un automatically unpacked by my, lab my library. Uh, more on that, on that later. But it's basically something that allows me to pack things together. OK. Now that we know how to, uh, to uh, uh, debug the programming, well, we'll try to do a simple tuple. Yes, again, because this, every uh, talk about template metaprogramming, try to do a simple tuple. So um, the, don't, uh, we'll go, I'll go there first. Don't read. <laughs> don't read. It's bad. OK. <laughs> OK. So the, this is a C++14 um, uh, tuple. But basically, uh, it can be done with uh, C++11 by just creating this uh, index sequence and make a, a make index sequence, which we can Google. It's just Google how C++11 index make it index sequence, and you'll find the very first link. Okay, so now it, this is the the simplest I can make it. It it doesn't have like this the comparator, the allocator, but it's it's simply a, a tuple, and you can access it. Uh, each element. So the ver the how you do it is basically this. Um, yeah. So this tuple that is there is an alias to the detail tuple, which is basically a basic tuple similar to a basic string. But we'll do a, uh, something special with this basic uh, tuple by each types. Uh, we'll go. We're gonna ship it to the end, and the very first argument, uh, template argument will be std make index sequence, which is an alias resolving to an index sequence from 0 to n minus 1. Sometimes I'll, I'll make a mistake and say zero, uh, 0 to n, but that's because I'm fast. So the first argument is always, uh, in, in with this alias, uh, an index sequence. Do you see my, my mouse? I hope. Yes. Okay. People in the back? Yes? Perfect. OK. So basically, the first thing in, in the here, it's a tuple element storage. It's an aggregate type, uh, aggregate, aggregate type where they take the first argument as a std size tn and the type name t, and this tuple element storage has a value of type t. This gets you, uh, it's, a, it's, a simple, it's a simple storage for the tuple. What, what we're going to do is inherit from, uh, the tuple we inherit from all of them. So basically, tuple with detail tuple, which is the alias there, is uh, a type that is the first types is always integral uh, sequence, and the rest of the types. And we only specialize if the first um, the first type is an index sequence. All the other cases, I don't care. And the the magic is here. We do we inherit tuple element storage e and ts. Then dot dot dot. What happened is that we have two type lists: one of st, uh, of std in, in, uh, of uh, std size t, and one of type names. And if they're the same size, which always happens because of make std integer sequence, we expand them one at a time, pack it together. This create this list of uh, tuple element storage one at a time. And for the the tuple itself. We just have to uh, call the constructor uh, to say the, the tech name argument. It might not be the same as the TS, uh, the, 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 the types there is there. For example, if you have a string and you pass it a const, uh, construct pointer, well, you, you, you just forward it. So tuple element storage, ETS, is the forward of argument args. And this is a position based. Uh, 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 Constructor. Uh, this old constructor is not needed in, I think, C14 or 17 because at this point the, the packs uh, are basically uh, aggregated themselves. But we are. In, I'm programming mostly in C11, so uh, yeah, I need to, I need some constructor there. Now that we have the storage, we need to ac access it, and this is the cool part. I'm just going to do some space. Okay. So if you want to get std get, uh, for example, this, this is my namespace std, with the s uh, 
not STD, stone, but I'm sorry, I, I pronounce it STD. Um, get zero. What we what is actually happening there is that um, we're going to template it with the n, type name t, type name t uh, ts. What is it there? I think I, I can remove it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's not great. This is a cons version, not very important, but it's basically there. Uh, so the STD size TN, type name T. Context per T ref get. The, now, the, the, I'm not uh, specializing uh, the get to the tuple, but to the tuple element storage of N and T. Why? Because when, when, when I sh uh, here, for example, T is a, this, min this uh, small T is a tuple, when I pass it to the function, the compiler will, will try to convert it to one of the tuple element storage. And only one of them has an n, of, because we go from 0 to n minus 1. And we specify this n, which is not the same as n minus 1. But when we specify this 0, there's only one uh, type that uh, the tuple inherit from that is a, std to, uh, a tuple element storage of n. The t is deduce. And this works on, on C2, to C11. Two plus plus so immediately we convert it to the to the uh, the correct one, and we just return the element dot value. And by reference, this is the conversion. You can see const t ref get blah blah blah. Um, if we have a const constable element storage, in and this work for all compiler. The the cool thing is when if you try to say uh, std get the int. Now this is the same thing. The only the it's the same function. The only thing I switch is this uh, the order of st. Now it's type name t, std size tn. I remove that because I don't need it. <laughs> Let me just uh, make sure the i work. <laughs> um, so now the same th same thing apply. If there's only one int, the n is deduce. And I can show it with uh, this uh, by doing std uh, s get and on a tuple of int float int, and I'm just gonna now this create an error message that is very long, uh, but only the only thing there that I need to do is where is it? There is somewhere the word ambiguous. I, I hope you see it. It's on. It's on the, the 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 ambiguous there. Because there's two. There's two int in there. If I replace it with the I don't know const char pointer. Special increment spark. What? I'll figure that one uh, later. But it basically, uh, the, the same thing apply. So now that we have like a very simple tuple access and tuple storage, I, we want to do more things with those tuple for foreshadowing the next slide. So what we, what we learn in this uh, example is basically how do you expand. Uh, so if we want to expand, uh, if we have a type name t and arg with plural ts and args being very etic, t arg doesn't expand. t args expand to basically um, t arg zero. This is a z this is zero <laughs> arg one. <laughs> uh, now in there. T S R. This is this expand to T zero zero. Arg the same. Then T one. The same arg, and in there. T S of of args. It's T S. A T zero. Arg zero, etc. Okay. But I want something more from my tuple. We, we are first going to try to use my library to do the, approximately the same thing. But 
we'll complexify it a little bit just for the next example for uh, making it small. So, uh, don't read. <laughs> um, I think it's better there. Okay. So basically, tuple element storage is exactly the same thing. We didn't change anything. It's still size t n, type name t. But there's this new type that I call inerit, which take all those ts and inerit from them. It doesn't matter what, what it is, it's gonna try to inherit from them. But if there's the same type twice, uh, it will fail to compile because it inherits from both of them. Or if there is like something like an int, it will not uh, be able to inherit from an int because an int is not inheritable. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna create this uh, small helper that I call two tuple element storage. Basically, what I'm trying to do is that there, uh, my library deal only with types. So if I want to represent a, a number, I need to use the std integral constant of this number and use the value. So this is why if you if I send an integral constant and a t, two tuple element storage will return two tuple element storage integral constant, which is there, which is a type uh, column column value t. This is the, the this is just an helper. But this is, this is where the magic work. So basically, tuple inherit, we receive a bunch of, of, uh, of types, and we're gonna zip the index with each of them. So basically, in fact, let me sh just show you what happened with this uh, um, tuple inherit. This is detail now. Hmm? What's happening? Oh yeah, we see it. We see double storage zero, a comma n, double storage n, yeah. one comma plus. So yeah. Maybe it's because of the, the, the... Oh yeah, because it tries to basically uh, uh, mismatch uh, match the, the number of arguments for each of them but basically yeah the, the error is good enough um, we have the tuple element storage zero int tuple element storage one float tuple element storage two char so this is what happened I zip the inputs with the uh, zip input with with the index and for each of them I'm gonna use this helper that I need to wrap because it's an alias two element two tuple element storage and then after that we wrap it inside this inner it that is there, so we're gonna inherit from all those tuple element storage, one at a time. Uh, yes? Yeah, just to be sure, zip input, yes. is that that is creating the index yeah. sequence? Yeah, this is the one that created the index, oh, you can for the, for the no, template arguments. So it zips all the template arguments with his own index? Yeah. Yeah, with, with the integral constant of the index. So it would be the equivalent of uh, a range uh, enumerate? Yes, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we can just uh, define tuple as enumerate from this, uh, this, this uh, alias. Top data, uh, to inherit, inherit from all of those, uh, from the, okay. So tuple enumerate from enumerate tuple, which enumerate from all those tuple element storage. And basically, we just call the, con the constructor that just, oh, this should be uh, args. Oh, whatever. Good enough for, the, good enough for our presentation. <laughs> and the cool thing is that I didn't need to change the getter. They're the same, with the same error of the TS there. <laughs> I didn't change anything. And basically, cons expert here tuple in char float. There, this is there. This is this is it. Static assert std get zero. Blah blah blah. I, I just do a simple test. So now that we just recreated this tuple using the same thing using my library, uh, we can do finally a small tuple. So there are some properties when you inherit from types uh, variadically. The first type. Um, the order of which you inherit will influence the size of your tuple. 
if you put, for example, uh, the biggest one at the, at the start, and you, but basically, if you sort the ties by size, and you put the biggest one at the first, and smaller and smaller, you'll get the smallest uh, tuple uh, possible. It's, it's not a pack. Uh, I don't know if you, if you are aware of this uh, uh, compiler, uh, um, not helper, uh, extension, where you can pack things. This is basically you're sorting the size. There, the first element will always be the, the biggest one. So, yeah, this is the, uh, yeah, we, we had some complexity, but I, I did it on purpose for the next slide. Uh, yeah, so zip and put. I, I hope you understand my logic of doing this. Okay, we, we, are, dis, we, we are using those types. Uh, we're gonna zip them with their index. Then for each of them, we're gonna transform them in the tuple, uh, the tuple element storage. And then we're just gonna wrap it inside the tuple and in, inherit. I hope. <laughs> um, because for small tuple, don't read. The only difference there is basically in between for each, uh, after we transform them into tuple element storage, we're gonna sort them by this thing, and then we, rip up, we will uh, rewrap them inside this inherit. So the way this sort function work, uh, for each you can kind of get how it works, but basically sort receive two types, and we're trying to do something similar to a binary predicate, but we are, we're in template metaprogramming, so I need to, to, to check if the, the result is either std true type or std bool type, which are both alias to integral constant of bool, true or false. So basically I receive two types, both of them are transformed into, into their size, integral constant of their size, and then I check it with greater. This is this, the best I, I, I did to uh, make it work just like lambda. Uh, but there's, if I just copy pasted that into the previous code, there was there's still a problem, which is a constructor. The constructor of tuple is position based from zero to n. So the first thing that you send to the tuple to, to the constructor will go to the biggest uh, um, tuple element storage, which is now all of order. You're, you're not guaranteed to know which one is the biggest of all the types. So that's a problem. And I tried different approach to, to make it work uh, by, by various means more or less complicated. But I finally found a solution that is somewhat readable. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. Next slide, uh, no, like this slide. So we're gonna go there. So tuple element storage is still the same. The tuple element storage is still the same. Uh, tuple in init is, basically this is just the same slide as before. But for tuple in init, we're gonna do two things. Zip and put for each of them transform to their tuple element storage, sort them by their size, wrap them finally into in init. This is just now, all the types are now sorted. And for the constructor, we're gonna add a new constructor to the inherit all. And this one have, like the first element will be a tag. And this tag is very, is very special because it's a type list. So what we're gonna do is uh, create an alias to initial order type list. And for we're, the only thing we're gonna do is zip and put TS for each, wrap them, uh, uh, transform them into uh, tuple element storage and then listify them. Listify them is just, um, it's another type list that it, instead of TS, it's LS, and that's the only thing that is important that you have to remember. It's not important, it's just a type list, that I, with, and, but with listify, it's a good name, and it's guaranteed to be a list. And now, the magic is there. This is the previous uh, constructor for a, to a normal tuple, and this is the new constructor. Okay, hear me out, because this is, Pretty funky. The new constructor, the first argument are, are all the types that are in order. They are, they, that's important, they are from zero to n. All those arguments US, uh, yeah, US, are still the, the, the arguments in order. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call the constructor, but by, instead of using TS that is there, we're gonna use types in order. So types in order is now calling std forward of us, which is there. So 
basically you have you inherit from all of those types in the in the order of their size by from biggest to smallest and in the the, the constructor we go from zero to n and we tell the compiler this is actually the list that you're going to compile uh, into so basically what you're trying to to tell the compiler is trust me <laughs> the the list must work the list must be uh, exactly well it must be correct it must have the same uh, list of types that are in the that, that you are inheriting from but once it but but if the compiler check and it work well it's it's just compiling and then and it work <laughs> yes if i understand correctly on the if you go up a little yes yeah bit, yeah and the inherit so basically is that uh, even though ps is the sorted or, or the sorted list of types yeah the types in order since we expand them in the as a initializer list yeah. the, of the constructor that order here doesn't matter. Yep. So since you receive them in order, then you yeah, there are, also in your yeah, order. Yeah, they are associated, for example. it's going to map to TS. Yes. TS, the, because oh. the, the initializer list of the constructor yeah. doesn't uh, let, let require me, the elements <laughs> to be in order. Let, let me just uh, show you something very quick. Struck, uh, let's say, uh, T. If you inherit from A and B in the constructor T, uh, let's say minus A and minus B, there's nothing preventing you from writing this. We do this A and B mostly by habit, where we, we ship it by position, but there's absolutely nothing preventing you from writing this. Yeah, this, this is a trick that I use. Yeah, it's just that now I have something that play with this type list. And this is the first argument, which is just a tag, a tag type. It doesn't have any memory usage. So yeah, this is, and now we can just say, the, the getter is still the same. Uh, in the main, here we go. So I create a tuple of typical T in constar float, 8, C, and half. And a const expert small tuple of the same list sorted t. And now I, I static assert that the size of the sorted is smaller than the size of the typical tuple. This is pretty cool, I think. <laughs> you now have a small tuple that is, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and most importantly, it's slideware. It's slideware friendly because I'm reusing stuff. I'm reusing this inner I'm just adding a constructor. I'm reusing tuple element storage. I'm just playing with it <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and the tuple is still the same. I have this small tuple in a writ, and I do this. I just create this special order type list, and I'm passing it to the constructor. And I do the same thing for align tuple. And this time, instead of sorting by their, si their size of, I'm, I'm sorting by their align of, if, if you are interested in... Uh, in doing something like that. So yeah, and everything works exactly the same as before. Uh, yeah, there's the rest is just some test to make sure that to make sure that it works. Okay, now the next one is a little bit more tricky. Not tricky in the in the sense that uh, um, um, it's more unreadable. <laughs> it's tricky that it uses more template meta programming. Um, Knowledge. So, are you familiar with the STD format, uh, uh, C20 STD format uh, library? We're going to do a very limited, uh, uh, a very limited one uh, by using my library. And there's some cool stuff that we're going to do. Okay. First of all, there is three parts to this uh, to this code: the string stringification, which we, we're, where we basically take a type and transform it to a string, because uh, this is the goal. This is the goal. SDDC out the my format. We create a name, blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, this is supposed to be by index uh, the, of the current one, and and if we want to access it by a key, that is a string, 
it should work. And uh, just to be sure, one, so basically, if I put, p pass it z uh, dot 77, eight, hola, d, string, le monde, arg, this is, this is just a special type that is uh, uh, basically a, a, a stood pair, and an actual stood pair, we're gonna get, first of all, the name, so we check there, and it's the name, so it should be John Doe first, and this is the result. After that, we're gonna get the second one, because we are in the, in the each time we uh, add a curly bracket, it increased the, the, the index of the current one, so this should be eight. Another one, so it should be hola, uh, hello, so we go into arg string hello world, so it should be word, uh, world, N name, name, John Doe again, and one, we get the first, the, the second argument, because zero index is the best index. So this is exactly what I, what's going on here at, at, at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just trying to. Yay. So how, how does it work? First, like I said, there's three parts. First is a stringification where you, when you take a type and you try to, to convert it to string, which is just the boring part. The second part is the, the, the string parsing, which I, 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 I warn you, is very bad. <laughs> I did I did this in an afternoon, and it and I realized because I was playing with iterators for manipulating a string, which you should not do. You should use the string dot uh, function that that you need. But uh, I'm bad at string at parsing string. <laughs> uh, and there, the the last part is the, the template meta magic. So everything that is stringify is part of the stringification. We receive a type. It's just for something like. Stringify a string, you just return it the string. Stringify constar, blah, 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 you, you turn it to a string. I didn't play with string view because I'm in C11, uh, or in this case 14, but that's not important. Uh, stringify stringify a spe the special types arg, that is just like stringify the t dot second. Uh, well, if it's an arithmetic type, just stringify using two string, which is the, the correct way to stringify an int and a float and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <coughs> Sorry. This is the meta magic. We'll come to back, back to this. Okay. And this is the string parsing. Some tests I did, something that we'll come to do. Okay. So the, the only thing that I need in this, all this for loop is basically just going to the, the string and just parse if I see some curly bracket. Uh, because it's just slide where I'm not doing some, uh, uh, the, the Unicode parsing from the std format. This is not the goal, and I just did this in that afternoon. Um, so basically, I, tr I try to parse uh, the, the string, blah, blah, blah. This is, not imp this is not important. But here is the part where I say, okay, I, I get the content of this, of those, cur I get those two curly bracket position, and I'm going to try to say, to check if it's just curly brackets, if there's an int, or if there's a string inside of it. So here is the distance between the delimiter and the delimiter n is equal to one, basically two curly brackets together. Um, we're, uh, to replace is basically the string. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna call format tuple visit count, which is just something that is incremented each time. Uh, yeah, to, okay, so now we need to explain the, meta, the meta magic in there. So if we want to compare it to uh, the, the index of the, of the arguments, basically what, what, I'm, what I'm doing is basically create uh, st, a tuple of the arguments by using std tie of args. So basically this is just a tuple of all the arguments taken by reference. And it's important to, to, to say, uh, because I've, I've shown you how to sort a tuple, there's no uh, benefit to sort a tuple of reference. They're all pointer on the read, which, is, which all have the same size. So we just use a, a standard tuple. And basically, we're going to create a list from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, but we're going to check, because sometimes the comp uh, if the... the I could just have doing something like a, 
uh, check um, to, from 0 to n, to n minus 1, but I want to check if the type that I'm going to try to stringify is string stringable. So I just try, I'm just creating a list of all the types that are uh, stringable. So basically, we zip the input with all the arguments, and we only keep them if the second one, because uh, integral constant, and after that is the t, the second we we just check the, the second, is detected stringable. Is detected, is part of the, is the detection idiom from, a, uh, from a, uh, the experimental type trace library, which works on all compiler. But I, I did my own version with a small difference that is not really noticeable in this, ex ex in this example. So I check using is, det det is detected stringable. Stringable is there, they call type. If I stringify it using some uh, some uh, uh, some 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 uh, error value reference to it, does it work? If it doesn't work, well, I'm, go I'm not going to check this index. That's the magic of this keep if. So let's say we have zero, one, two, and the 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 one at index zero is not stringify it, string stringable. I'm just not not going uh, to check it. So we trend, uh, and after that, we re after this function, this keep if, we receive all uh, the lists that, that are stringable. And I'm only interested in the, the, the index of them. So I transform them into the first, which is basically only the integral constant. And then I wrap them into this std integer sequence of std size t. So now, I finally have an std uh, integer sequence of all the types that, that of the all the index that I'm interested in. And this is now a, 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 an alias. I have an alias to it. So to check if we if we only have curly brackets, sorry, I said the current uh, index of, of where we are, the tuple are the tuple of the all the arguments by reference, and I just create a tag of all the index sequence that, uh, that, is, that is needed. And I call this function format tuple visit, which is there. And this is a, what I call the comma trick. Um, how do you say? It's basically you create an array of uh, a bool, and we use the comma operator that is there to go one by one from the, for each uh, variadic arguments. We're just going to go wrong one after the other, and if it's true, if we if, if we um, uh, basically if the in, the current index that is there is equal to the index sequence that is variadic, so if let's say that the current index is one, if one equals zero, no, that's not that's not what we are going to do. If one equals one, yes, so now we are, we're going to this is we're going to abuse this ternary operator to basically said. Stringify the std get integer sequence of this tuple. So if one equal one, string, re, the result of the string will be the result of stringify std get index sequence of this tuple of one of this tuple, etc. And now we just and and this is all that, that needs to be done. We re, we say uh, we save this result to a to a string to replace, and then we replace it. This is bad. Again, string parsing is not my, my cup of tea. <laughs> but basically, we replace it inside the, the We replace this. Uh, no, if we are in the, in, the, in the index case. We replace this by the first argument, which is 8. And this, this works. Same thing now for the key. Because what we're going to do is reuse this, this, uh, this um, detection idiom to check if there's std get one work. So basically, if, if it's a pair, get zero and get one work. And we're just going to, I'm just going to check if, it, uh, if uh, the types that you are, that the types work under those conditions and keep the, its index if it, if, uh, if it, the one that I'm interested. So same principle, I, I receive a list of all those one. And basically, here, I try. This is basically like the, the the part where I say, okay, try to convert this the string, and if to an integer, 
And if it doesn't work, I buy because STD all um, STD STR ST O U L true. If it's true, then it's a string of the key. We're gonna do some formatable visit, to formatable map visit uh, using this uh, this uh, this key uh, integer sequence. And now we're gonna do the same trick. If the key, the current key, is equal to the first argument of the the tuple indexed, this is just like the be the best uh, I could do to make it readable. But it's the same principle. I, I I'm abusing a comma trick to make it work under under those conditions. Then stringify it using this the, the second argument of the of the pair. And it worked. This is just an afternoon work. I could make it work I could make it better using uh, a better um, I don't know a better heuristic for the for the, the detection idiom or basically improve the, the string parsing first. <laughs> first. Um, but basically this is a very bare bone version of the STD format library using I don't know um, 120 lines of code done in an afternoon and most of the of this was just correcting the error of my string parsing. <laughs> okay. So this was the most complex case. And what I'm I, I've tried to use there is the detection idiom to basically parse a string however I want it. And this is quite um, uh, this is quite versatile on your on your approach. Because now we have all those arguments, and we're and we're fetching the ones that we need at runtime. We're, it's a mix of both runtime and compile time uh, parsing. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Don't forget, don't forget. It's it's slideware. <laughs> uh, if, if you want more information on this uh, detection idiom, you can go into C++ reference. CPP experimental is detected. Uh, the, this, this is the small difference with my library. It's not important in this case, but if you want to know the one. Okay. So all the arguments, all the, the, the code I, I wrote was basically the same thing. I create an integer in, uh, sequence of the types that I need, and I parse it some, somehow. The tuple, I, just, I don't have to remove some of them, but I need all of them in the same... Uh, I'll, I'll, I need all of those from zero to n minus one, and the, and for the format I filter them however I need. There was a, another example, but uh, before that, but due to time, due, due, due time I I remove it. And now a small a small t uh, note on metaprogramming. Um, so there's a, a few libraries that are uh, that trying to to reason about types, where we, we want to manipulate types either in the integral constant or the actual types. Um, and all have their same, the, some advantage and some disadvantage. My, uh, for example, mine is a remix of the Clavier MPL, and Clavier MPL is very fast. They use a trick called fast tracking to go, like if I want the, the, the last one of the types, it will expand into like 64 specialization just to make sure that it goes to if you it's if it's bigger if if your types is bigger than for example 32 it will skip the first 32 to immediately reuse the same function to go in, uh, to to the end this is called fast tracking uh, it's extremely fast but there and I was using uh, Xavier MPL for a long time until I wanted to improve the interface and this is uh, basically um, there was a post by Arturo de Earl that is explaining the difference between all those libraries. Uh, it's, an it's an extremely uh, good post. I, I encourage you to read it. And, but there is this thing called um, type list. For this, this comment, every other solution has to spend at least two lines of code transforming type list to something, to lib something, and back again. This is because of the example that is basically uh, Remove type, take a type list, remove all the empty types, and then sort them by their size. So um, I'm just gonna go into the here because um, all the I just copied all the example. So for MP11, it's quite it's quite good. 
Um, like this is like you, first of all, sorted and filtered is like, you, you have to read it like this. Okay, so I start with the type list there, remove if inside the type list it's empty, and then here, MP sort. So you, 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 you nest them and you go, you expand out how you, how you read. Using this, you sort the result of this first function using this predi basic binary predicate. Um, this is Anno, which has a very special interface because it uses uh, a function instead of template metaprogramming. Uh, but it's still the same thing. You have to say it's, it's a little bit more uh, uh, abstracted, but technically the basic type is there, TC. And you have to say, okay, remove if, sort them, after that, after that, retemplate them to the to the TC. Um, this is clavier.mpl. This you have to, to. I'll help you read this. Call. First of all, you have the TL. Unpack them. So now you only have the arguments. Remove if this is the check if it's empty, and after that, sort them by uh, this 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 binary predicate. And return after that uh, those types rapid with the, the type the same type list. Again, all the other arguments, all those library have to unpack them, do something, and then repack them using the same. Uh, there's two lines of code to unpack and repack. Uh, except MP11 because their axiom of MP11 is that they only uh, every type list only applies the function to the arguments. Every so that's like I think it's a, it's an axiom that is that has its advantage, but for my special library, I wanted I don't I wanted this as opt-in. So this is my solution. This is the, the, the same thing. I have a special function that take this any variadix, so on args, sort. Uh, I should uh, on on the argument first of all I, I remove if. Uh, trait is empty. Uh, hmm? And then you mean T, E, trait. Hmm? STD. Oh, yeah, yeah, T. Thank you. Okay. So basically, this is a thing, the same thing. I have this special function that is basically, um, in fact, I, I'm going to show you the implementation of this on args. Because it only applies the function to the to the on to the arguments. So where did I put it? Uh, I put it uh, there. Include. Nope. Thank you. Oh yeah. Here we go. So this is the implementation. Um, Okay, so there technically on arcs. So th this little f is basically like the thing that I pass the, the inputs to the function. This is where the function go. And when I try to evaluate this, I create a new function, evaluate. I call this input with all those arguments that are there because it's 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 there. I do those those function. And then I rewrap them. Quote is, this, quote is the same as wrap. Rewrap them with the same initialize, in, initial types because it's there. I can reuse types however I want. I can treat them as a function or as a type by itself. So this is not possible in Favia because the functions are not variadics. I cannot add something to the end. This, this is the thing that I was very, that, that, uh, that, that well, piss set me off and I tried to fix. Fix by rewriting a new, a new library. <laughs> um, but basically, if you wanted to do it in Xavier, you, you can't because in the last function is nested inside another one. So it get, so if I wanted to do that, I needed to, to parse the function, and this gets complex, and this gets weird, and I don't like it. <laughs> so not, but for, with, my, with my library, hey, just call a new, a new function, uh, start with those arguments, those are, and this is the all the function that we pass by argument there, uh, here. 
uh, and after that, wrap them with, with, uh, with the initial types, and it worked without any, any care of the world. This is just the, con the reference version. I should have the con version. Not important. Thank you. OK, I I'm near the end anyway. And now for the, the uh, previous last, the, the previous last, the, the, the what? Penultimate. Yeah, the penultimate example of my library. This is, will be a, a bunch of functions that I think are cool. <laughs> Of my library. Uh, I did not. Uh, where is it? I, okay. So, so we're. Uh, um, I'm gonna do the same thing. Struct uh, t. So first of all, for each fork and respectively, those are the two. The three. Like I call them the three musketeer. Uh, so, for example, if I say input in float for each other pointer, you guess it. It's a TS of int uh, pointer float pointer. Now, for fork, this is very different. For fork. For each function inside this, uh, for each function there, like uh, this is the fork, and for each of them all the, in the arguments, we'll reverse, check if they're the same identity. Oh, this is this, uh, where is the wrap? Yeah, this is wrap line. Oh, this is not very, I'll just, and I'll, and I'll go with big. Okay. So fork now is just a float int, because the first function is reverse them. The second one is uh, integral constant bool false because they are not the same. In, uh, int and float are not the same. And after that, re return what you get, identity. So it's get ts of int and float. Because this is packed together. If I want to unpack them after the fork, I can use flatten. And now they're all in the same float, int. Integral constant of bool false, int, float. This is good. And finally, so you fork the function uh, for each uh, for each function, you copy uh, all the arguments to the function. So it's 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 a forchette. <laughs> uh, next is respectively. Um, I name it respectively because it's in English. It's like you're doing, you have A, B, and C, and respectively you do one, two, three. So basically, it's a fork, but you get the the one at the correct index. So for, and you, you need to have the same amount of input as the number of function. So now uh, int float respectively add a pointer, add const. So the first argument add, add a pointer, and the second one get a, they get a const. This seems simple, but those three are used everywhere, everywhere in my library. Uh, on args, we already. Um, we already uh, look at, but I want to show you something that has been interesting in, on R. We're gonna get, uh, we're gonna start with the input of std vector of int, and on the arguments, we're gonna reverse them. And after that, we're gonna list a file. So basically, what we get is a, a, list, of, a list of std vector of allocator int after that int. <laughs> now, you may, you may think this is a little bit weird, and it is, because um, you, this is not the correct order, <laughs> but there's nothing preventing you when you only when you're not instantiating the type to do some funky uh, things. But if you try to instantiate them, for example, for now you're instantiating this ls. If I remove this the file, now there's a bunch of error because it, it tries to allocate to use uh, the allocator types on the int. Okay, five minutes, perfect. Uh, group. Grouping is cool because sometimes I just need to group them to, uh, correctly. So for first of all, group by. Group. Okay. Oh, this is not very friendly. 
Okay, let's let's just have, okay. So basically, I start with int float int const star. We're gonna group them together. This technically check if the result. This is a projection, so it check if the, each result is the same. It's a binary. It, it get one a unary function. So now and the result are compared together. So int is the same as int. Float are float are packet together and const star. So the same types are uh, packet together. If we want to change it by range, so now I group them inside a, a, a list. Each of them, uh, each of the, type, the 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 groups are packed together inside the list. So uh, yes, in second, uh, one second. Uh, TS of TS of int int TS of float TS of conchar. Yes. Yes. The the yes, that's actually the implementation of group by. <laughs> group by is, is basically a, a variation of uh, group range. And technically, unique is a little bit of the same. Unique, I just int float int constar. So now there's only one int, only one float, and only one uh, constar pointer. And basically, what I do with unique is I group them by groups of the same thing. And for each group, I take the first. <laughs> so for so and this work. <laughs> um, next, I have a little bit less than three minutes. Uh, write, write is my special function. It's the one that is completely uh, unique to my library because what I'm I'm doing is basically create new. Uh, I receive the inputs, I create a new function out of it, and I evaluate them using those inputs. This in other language is called an eval. <laughs> Uh, in JavaScript, there is something like you can create function at runtime, but in my time, in my case, we are always in compile time. <laughs> so this work and this is I, it. It can lead to some crazy optimization. Um, it's in fact the only function that has like the uh, uh, a write underscore debug to see what kind of function you get after, before you evaluate them. <laughs> uh, and this it's so powerful. Uh, the rest of the function are implemented using the, 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 the write function. So for example, copy, that is there. Um, I'm just going, oops, I didn't do there. Um, let me just make it a little bit more readable. So it's the input in the, you, you, three times, int, int, int. What I do is I receive an int, I, I ignore it, I create uh, integ uh, integer sequence of 0 to n minus 1 of 3, so one, uh, 0, 1, 2. I change each of them by the identity function, and then I fork them. So the fork copies each argument to each function, which all all identity, and this creates, uh, uh, it, it copies n time the, the type that you receive. And the craziest, the, the crazy part is I can act, and I, is that I can do this. Repeat, repeat. Let me just say three. I don't know. Add a pointer. Oh yes, it's convertible to <laughs> to zero, of course. So int pointer pointer pointer. And what I'm I'm actually doing with this repeat is instead of copying the input, I copy the function. So each function are copied three times. <laughs> and now the crease of the creases of them all bind. Bind is a little bit special because it, it takes either an input or a meta function. Let me show you. Yeah, so basically you can see that the first result is int. Let's say after that I want a float. Wow. Trying to just do it correctly. TS of int and float. Then after that, I want them in reverse. So int float. Oh yeah, there's only one int. So I'm gonna add this. Oh no no no. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to. Uh, I don't know. You know what? We have this, and I want this inside of that. There we go. <laughs> so this is a little bit weird, 
of course. So, bas so basically, it rec it's technically recursive. So now we have, if we start with int, I can add a pointer. Uh, after that, I push back uh, a float. After that, I do the same thing. <laughs> and this worked correctly, recursively. And what I'm actually doing is I'm integra integrating the, the detection idiom inside my function. So I check if each function is either a, a type or a, a meta function. And, I and if, I, uh, if it's a function, I just push the result. And if it's a type, I change it to like the pushback uh, equivalent of this type. So yeah, this, this is a little bit crazy. <laughs> but this, this is one of my coolest functions. I'm integrating the detection medium inside my own library to, to leverage the thing I want to leverage. And that's about it for my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I don't know if you want, if you have some question, I'm sure you have. Uh, I can answer the, the question about performance and my comments about Circle. Yes, please use the mic. <laughs> um, so what I understood is that there's a lot of uh, those meta functions that are implemented in terms of other meta functions. Yes. Uh, so what is the what is the set of uh, um, the most uh, the most simple meta function that you implement and all the other on top of? Uh, there's sometimes you can just. Uh, Okay, so other libraries are also doing it too. Like, for example, you can do some uh, some part. Technically, uh, sort is technically implementable in with partition, or uh, partition is itself implementable by remove if and keep if. You can do something like that. So remove if, remove if and keep if would yeah. be this the, atomic yeah, the, the, thing that is not yeah, implemented um, in. in but, uh, other things. I'm just going to try to see if I have a good example. But basically, my library goes a little bit further by itself creating the, 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 the new function that it needs. I see. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. In, for, the right function is, in, is everywhere in my library, but it's the, it's, a function, sorry, it's a function that took me like a month just to be sure that, this is, that I want to debug that. <laughs> It's one of those craziest things that, that can happen when you, when you improve the interface. Because by improving their interface, what happens is that actually I can create function at compile time because we are at compile time. So now it's become an eval. And then since I can just add new function at the end, I can do, it's, it, it's very uh, versatile library. And sometimes it's just very, it's a gift that keep on giving, like I said. So right is really like one of your most basic. It's, it's one of those bare bone. Uh, there, there is the evil pipe is actually uh, an alias to one of the function. So you can the the the, the pipe can be nested to, together to create a function. So sometimes, for example, in fork, if you want to say uh, add a pointer and add a, uh, a cons inside for the same input, you can just wrap them in with the pipe. So and now it becomes one function. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and finally, the performance. Uh, like I said, Xavier MPL is faster. It uses fast tracking everywhere, and I have a different approach to, to improve the compiler performance. I still need to do uh, MetaBench, which is the Duidion uh, performance checker of compile time. Uh, but since I understand, that it, I tried my, my best to make it. The goal was, was interface first. To get to get new function, and uh, uh, yes, that's. But it, but Xavier has the right to be faster. But for some other function, uh, I think I, I'm one of the best <laughs> uh, by using write. Basically, write is is I can do some crazy thing. Uh, I can specialize to. Um, well, I can specialize. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's it's something that uh, please come back to with yeah. me to this. Uh, and what about circle? Circle is good. Circle has some neat things. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's on, it's unfortunately not C plus plus eleven compatible <laughs> because it's its own compiler. But it has a good approach and um, the the so yeah, that's my that's my opinion. I my goal was C plus plus eleven. 
create a new library using a new interface, create a new function, and it, it, it's a rabbit hole that is very fun to explore, but at some point, <laughs> you're very down the rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, yeah. And, and thank you for, for uh, listening to me. I talked about uh, this crazy metaprogramming library. Thank <laughs> you.